Hey, thanks for stopping by. And this is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what I decided this morning was I'm going to attempt to record the partial assembly of this long wire, wire antenna kit, uh, mainly to do, show you a little more detail about what comes in the kit. And you can make your own kit. It's not that difficult. Um, this is basically a long wire 50 foot antenna. 50 foot, that's the length of the antenna wire right here. And we're going to do a quick video here to show you kind of in general the assembly. I'm not going to go through everything. And then we'll do a video of actually installing it. And then finally a video on reception. So here we go. So let me take this out of the bag. Oh goody, a train's going to go by. We're about, oh, uh, half a mile from a train railroad track. And they love to blow their little whistle right in this part of town. It's probably a good reason for it. I don't know what it is. Okay, let me dump everything out here. And now, as I go through this, I'll mention some things that I would maybe change if you're doing this yourself. Um, this is the uh, instruction sheet that comes with it. It basically um, tells you what's included and in very general terms how to assemble it, although it's not that complicated. Okay, so here we go. Again, I've done several videos on this already that describes what it is and where you can get it on eBay. Okay, so let me uh, move these things around and get to the root. Okay, so this is the um, 50 feet of what you can cut if you don't have room for 50 feet. Antenna itself is basically copper wire. This is, this is about the best you can use. That's what is supplied with this kit, which is stranded real copper wire kind of a little can be a little expensive if you have to buy this brand new so um, what we would need to do is this is the lead-in now as i've told you before i would prefer to use shielded lead-in to keep the rf noise in my office from getting onto this lead-in and getting into the radio but i'm going to use what came in the kit. So what we will do is we will strip one end of this and what I prefer to do, which I'm not going to do in this video because it takes longer, is I would solder it to the antenna, kind of like that, and I'll zoom in a little bit. Again, this is all very basic stuff. So I'd solder that onto this. So what I'm going to do first so that I don't come up short on the wire is I'm going to attach this one end to one of these isolators. So you just stick that in there, not a big deal. I know a lot of people are getting bored and getting ready to um, abort this video. And you just um, twist it. Again, if you want to make it more secure, you can solder this on itself. That would make it more secure, less likely to come unraveled, but I've used enough here so I don't think that's going to happen anyway, so I'm not going to solder that. Okay, so now what I want to do is, and I don't know exactly where I want to tie this into this, because there might be some obstruction or something that I have to get around. So what I'm going to do initially for the installation is I'm just going to wrap this wire around this. But first I've got to strip it. Hold on. Let me get my wire strippers. These are um, kind of professional grade wire strippers. There was some reason that they didn't want to use them anymore so uh, the place where I used to work surplused them all and got different kind 
maybe something with ESD or something. Maybe when you when you did that, it caused static or something. So I got these and they work excellent. Just got to get the correct wire size here. And I'm going to give myself quite a bit of wire because I'm not going to solder it initially. I'm just going to wrap it around. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll twist this bare wire. Again, this is stranded wire, the best you can use as far as antenna work. Solid wire will work, but it's, it's more likely to break. And I'm just going to twist this for now around the antenna wire. Um, again, best thing to do would be to solder it, but I'm not sure exactly where this is going to get set up outside. So I may have to adjust where this comes in. Okay, so I'm going to, the kit is supplied with a full roll of tape, black tape, electrical tape. So another thing you could do, and again, trying to make this the best you can and more permanent, is you could um, get some shrink wrap tubing. Now they do supply three pieces, short pieces, of, that's not one, three short pieces of, or two, excuse me, I thought there was three, maybe, oh, there's, there's the third one, um, pieces of shrink wrap tubing. And they're almost, nah, I think it would be kind of tight. I was going to say they're almost um, big enough that you could start at the end of this wire and bring it all the way through and snug it over the uh, connection here and then shrink shrink it and then you'd have a better seal to keep uh, water out of that connection. Um, again, the, the ones that are supplied are a little too small to do that. They're mainly maned, they're mainly maned, oh, I gotta take those speech therapy lessons. Um, they're mainly for attaching these two connectors that will go to your radio. Uh, put the shriek rack, like that fits in there perfectly. And then now you've got a good secure connection on it. So that's one thing you, you should, maybe should do, maybe not necessary, um, is put shrink wrap tubing over this connection versus tape. I found, and most of you have found, that this electrical tape outside doesn't last very long. It comes unraveled, it dries out, not a good idea. Again, my setup is right now is gonna be temporary to see how this setup goes. And um, so we're just gonna use some of this tape to secure that connection. I'm gonna cut off a piece here. So I'm kind of showing you how I'm doing it temporarily, and I'm hopefully mentioning the proper way, proper way to do it. So this putting electrical tape over this connection, long term is not the best solution. Short term, for my testing, it's fine. It also will help take the stress off of this connection. So if you happen to pull on these wires, that will help a little bit. I'm not doing a very neat job. But you get the idea. Ooh, I did a terrible job, actually. I got a little bump there. And the thing is, you want to shield that connection from the weather, from moisture, from rain. Okay, so that's almost ready to go. The, I got the insulator on this end. Now what I would do is, and uh, let me see if I can cut this with scissors. Otherwise I'll have to get a pair of knives. There we go. Okay, so here's the rope that is supplied. It's about three feet. Whoops, it's about three feet. Uh, where the heck did the camera go? There it is. This is um, a synthetic rope. Um, this will last quite a while except it does have a tendency to dry out and become brittle. But that's after several years of being out in the weather. Now let's see. 
Now, the gentleman that made these kits, he's burnt the end off so that there's not loose fibers. So that'll make it easier to insert. It's too big. It won't fit in there. It's too big. Ah, see, by doing that, he's made this end too big. So I could cut it off and then reburn it. Let me try the other end. See if it's smaller. Nope, it ain't going to go in. Now, I'm going to try to cut this. This is, this is pretty stiff. I think it's going to be too big. And I'm not going to be able to cut it very easily with scissors. This stuff, these, these, uh, this rope, it's a, I think it's nylon, really tough stuff, really strong. And I can't cut it with a pair of scissors. Um, what do I else do I have close by? I need a pair of big pair of dikes. Hold on, let me go get my big dikes. Stand by. Okay, I'm back. Uh, now, like I say, I'm trying to show you what it takes to assemble this if you're making your own and some of the problems you'll run into. Um, this is the first problem I run into. Well, at least the first one of the first problems. So I'm going to try clipping off that end where he's heated it and it's now too big. I think it's still going to be too big, big even when I just, you know, just all the time you do. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, now, uh, now I got all these little frayed hairs, which was the reason that the gentleman that made this kit heated that up, and I think it's still not going to fit easily. Almost fits. Um, let me see if I can, I don't think it's going to make it. Okay, I'm going to give up. Um, this, this is just too big for this size insulator. So I'm going to give up. What I was planning on using anyway is, um, a, a rope that I use. Let me see if I can, stand by, let me see if I can find it. This is what I normally use, and it uh, it holds up pretty good in the weather. Uh, it definitely will not hold up as good as this, but this is basically the same idea. It's much smaller, much more flexible, and another thing you can use is something called paracord. That's probably the best to use, and so this slips in here very easily as he there we go that slips in there real, real easy so that's what I would use this is uh, you can see this, the size difference considerably smaller it's it's perfect for these size holes so then I would tie this off and then I would leave you know so much kind of guess at what I need and in my case uh, this, this, these would not work anyway, because in my case, the way I have to string things up in my trees, I need quite a bit of this cord. And I'll show you when I'm attempting to install it, what I mean by I need quite a bit. So that's basically the assembly. So I'll tie this off and then I'll put an, the other insulator the other insulator on the other end of the antenna. Like I say, you might have to shorten this. This comes uh, in, typically it comes in uh, 50 foot lengths with the kit. You can specify the length that you want 
uh, in the order. If you want longer, it'll probably cost you a little more. Uh, possibly, I don't know. If you only wanted to take 25 feet, he might give you a little price break since he's, he's not selling as much wire. So that's it. Um, I hope, I know, I realize this is pretty simple operation. Not a big deal. And I've built similar antennas like this. I have one that I've used quite often in my shows. Um, it's about 40 feet long. It goes to my backyard, not my front yard, like the other antennas do. And I've been using it for like, like I say, 25, 30 years it's been up. And it works fine. Now, it is um, solid wire. Not a big difference between solid and strand, except stranded wire, like this right here, this gauge particularly, um, is much more flexible and uh, lighter, much lighter. That's another thing you want to do is you want these antennas to be light so they're not pulling either on the trees or poles that you've connected it to. And uh, it's not going to be damaged by heavy winds, you know, yanking it around. Okay, so anyway, that's it. Um, I gotta make my mind up whether I want to uh, release this video or not. It's it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, one other thing that I didn't mention is once you get this kind of set up, and I can't see the other end of this wire. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. What you want to do is you don't want to put the alligator clip or this this guy right here you don't want to put it on until you bring this wire into your house because this is pretty small so you can make a pretty small hole either in the wall or under a window uh, to get this through once you put this on though it's going to be a little more difficult so yeah put the antenna up you put the lead in to bring it into your workshop or your house then you attach either this or this or a connector of your choice. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Have a great day. We're going to try to install this today. Uh, there's predicted rains, so I might not get it up today. Bye-bye.